Hello. Today I wanted to take a <clears throat> bit of a different approach uh, for talking about movies in the sense that um, I'm going to talk about an older movie again. Um, I guess last time I did talk about an older movie technically. You know, Return of the Jedi being uh, 40 years old and all, but at the same time, um, that's fairly popular. Um, I guess this film is fairly popular too, but it isn't a film that is widely talked about it much. Um, that film is Being There, starring Peter Sellers as uh, Chance the Gardener. And uh, I also have the Criterion Blu-ray. Uh, and uh, you know, on the back it says how, uh, you know, he's... Uh, Peter Sellers plays Chance the Gardener, who uh, uh, essentially, uh, actually this does it better, you know, he has to roam Washington, D.C. after uh, his benefactor, um, who he's worked for as a gardener for years, passes away. Uh, he uh, is, He's a very simple man you know, fairly childlike, and, um, his only experience with the outside world is through television, so everything is brand new, uh, when he's out and about walking around Washington, and then he, uh, he's looking at, a himself on TV because there's cameras and there's multiple TVs. This is back in 1979 when the film came out. So he, you know, is surprised by this. And then he's walking into this street a bit, you know, not purposely ex exactly. Um, but he does so and he also gets kind of hit by a, a limo uh, by a wealthy woman. Uh, so, whose husband is a uh, old tycoon. Um, uh, Shirley MacLaine plays Eve, and her husband, uh, Ben, is played by uh, Melvin Douglas. And, um, you know, they uh, let him uh, go to their place. Um, uh, they have a doctor at their home. Gets looked at, and Make sure all is well. And uh, throughout the course of the film, he is well-liked by pretty much everybody. And uh, Ben knows um, the president, so he stops by. And uh, uh, throughout the film, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting just to see how everything transpires and how this man, who's a very simple guy, really is experiencing the world like for the first time, interacting with people beyond uh, the small people he would uh, have interacted with um, beforehand. And doing a simple um, gardening. And also he has these sort of things that are like, you know, like metaphors with gardening. And how he's able to sort of uh, talk about things and how like, they result or resemble um, sort of like life and other important things. And these are all interpreted as being very meaningful and more in-depth than just but they are on the surface, which is just about gardening. And that's really what he means. It's very fascinating just to see this film and how everything happens and the characters' interactions with uh, all these people. Um, the performances are excellent. Um, this is one of the last performances by Peter Sellers. He did have... Uh, he played... Uh, Fu Manchu, I believe. Uh, 
Dr. Fu Manchu, like that character after this. Um, uh, he died a year after this film came out in 1980. <clears throat> and um, so this is one of the last performances and uh, seems to be definitely the last performance he was given immense, uh, immense praise for. Um, I don't want to talk about this film too much in depth as to certain things that happened because, again, this is a film that isn't talked about as much, at least not from what I've seen. Um, every so often, this film sort of gets um, mentioned here and there, but for the most part, it is sort of um, uh, just not discussed at all. And so I kind of wanted to bring to light this film for people. Um, if you have the Criterion channel, I'm pretty sure it's on there. I believe I've seen it a time or two. Um, but if it's not, I don't know where it would be streaming. Um, occasionally it's on the Turner Classic Movies, which is where I first saw it. Uh, I believe if memory serves, it was during a, uh, like they're honoring Peter Sellers that month, so they had a bunch of his films, and this was one of them. If it wasn't that, it was like they were just had like a bunch of comedies, and there was many Peter Seller uh, films since he did a lot of comedies. Pretty much most of his career, there might be a drama or two here or there, but for the most part, he's done comedies, and I think this would be seen to some extent as a drama to a degree because. This is a this is a satire and it is funny, but you might not really laugh out loud. Like you know what's funny, you are amused by what's happening, what's being said at times. Yet you won't necessarily exactly burst out uh, in any kind of uh, gut busting sort of laugh. Uh, if if that makes sense, it's funny. Yeah, you might not really laugh uh, part. Um, Peter Sellers was nominated for an Academy Award. He did not win. Part of why he thinks he lost is because during the credits, they have uh, an outtake of a scene, which he believed breaks the entire like spell of the film. Like Everything you just watched is undone because you're now watching... Peter Sellers trying to get through a scene, not laughing, and yet but as what he has to say is pretty funny, and so he keeps you know burst uh, bursting out into laughter at various uh, times. And I can kind of see where he's coming from. I don't know if I exactly agree to an extent that it breaks the film in the terms of the magic of what you just saw. But I can definitely see how people would uh, say that. You know, it's like it, it was so amazing and then all of a sudden uh, this happened. Uh, kind of sort of stops the film to an extent. Um, but, you know, uh, that's me. I don't necessarily think it destroys the film exactly in terms of the magic that it kind of leaves you with. and um, At least I've never had that problem. Um, and I've known about Peter Siller's thoughts on this for some years now, and I've rewatched it every so often because it's just hilarious. Um, um, well, all right then, that happened. Um, Melvin Douglas won an Academy Award for this film, um, beat out uh, Robert Duvall for Apocalypse Now. Uh, Peter Sellers lost Best Actor to uh, Dustin Hoffman and Kramer vs. Kramer, which I believe is he won because a decade prior he lost the Academy Award for Bendite Cowboy, and he lost to John Wayne for True Grit, and it seemed like uh, John Wayne won because he didn't have an Academy Award, 
and also his best work in uh, uh, The Searchers wasn't even acknowledged. That film got nominated for nothing. So it seemed like that was in compensation for not acknowledging his best work. And then so Dustin Hoffman wins because he was not acknowledged in terms of actually getting in the Academy Award when he probably should have. Though I don't know if I would say Peter Sellers was the best actor that year. I know some will say he definitely was, and there's no dispute about that. And um, I can see why people would say he is the best. For me, I think that uh, Roy Scheider and all that jazz gave the best performance for the lead actor category. Um, you know, I'm not a big musical guy, but uh, I think that is his best performance. Uh, my favorite performance by him is, you know, Chief Brody and Jaws. I think I've kind of expressed my fondness and love of Jaws, so I don't think that's a shock to anybody who's seen me talk about that film uh, here and there over the years. But, you know, that film was excellent. I could probably talk about uh, all that jazz at some point. I've kind of wanted to rewatch it, especially after seeing this. But regardless, uh, I do think Peter Sellers should have won an Academy Award, and I think he should have won for Doctor Strangelove. He lost a <clears throat> Rex Harrison for uh, uh, My Fair Lady, which is not a bad film necessarily. You know, I'm not a big musical guy again, but it's all right, though I primarily watched it because Audrey Hepburn, but when watching the three performances by Sellers and Dr. Strangelove and then watching uh, Rex Harrison and My Fair Lady, Sellers is just, uh, in, my, in my book, uh, he gave a better performance than all three characters he played. He played them all differently and appropriately, and it's just astonishing to watch that the range of an actor in one film playing different characters um it was an it, that was amazing and that was a talent that peter sellers had that in, in some ways we don't really get to see much anymore um of course not too many people will play multiple characters in a single film uh, as much as perhaps they did way back when but you know um Also, with CGI, we don't you don't really have to do that either. Uh, but yeah, this film is excellent. Um, uh, Peter Sellers did win a Golden Globe for actor in a comedy or musical. So Roy Scheider lost out on the uh, Golden Globe to him, but I think that's fine. And if Peter Sellers did win the Oscar for this, I wouldn't really be uh, that upset it would have been pretty well earned um but i do think that uh, <clears throat> uh roy scheider did give a better performance even if it was just like a, that bit uh, let that much um this film was directed by hal ashby who made a made many films including uh the last detail which is 50 years old this year and i will probably talk about that at some point in the near future. I've been meaning to make a video on that and also, of course, rewatch it, but yeah. Anyway, this is an excellent film. Um, if you haven't seen it before, give it a watch. It's uh, pretty good, especially if you've seen Peter Sellers' films and you enjoy his work and you just haven't seen this. This is definitely a great film. Uh, yeah, nothing more to really say. Uh, Peter Sellers was excellent. He always has been, or always was excellent. Even when he did films that weren't all that great, you can't say he wasn't giving his all and that he wasn't uh, amazing in, uh, in what he was doing. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
I hope all of you are having a great day. I hope you all had a great week. And you all have a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time.